so let's lift up on this lid. First up is the Mate 40 Pro. Inside here is an insert with a SIM ejector pin tucked away up top. And inside that, a clear jelly case. Look at that big circular camera cutout. Deeper inside the box, there's a 66 watt supercharged charging brick, a USB-C to A cable with a touch of orange instead of the usual purple. Finally, a pair of USB-C headphones. Just generally, it's a nice, smooth feeling phone. There's not a single sharp edge to be found on it anywhere. And cool little red power button too. Also, just when you thought you'd seen every possible way to design a smartphone camera module, here's another one. They call it the space ring. I call it the camera donut, but you can kind of see where they're coming from. It's got a very alien UFO type aesthetic to it, but I'm still not sure if I think it looks futuristic. I can't help but feel like flip it upside down and this is an iPod scroll wheel. But there is a major perk of having a camera ring this wide and central, and that's the fact that it prevents the phone wobbling. And then around the front, you see the huge display, a roughly 2K 6.76 inch OLED display with a 90 Hertz refresh rate, fingerprint reader underneath the glass, of course. And then they're doing what they did last year with the Mate series, which is curving that display right over the edges till it like melts into the side of the phone. Now, y'all know how I feel about actually using curved displays. They create unnecessary accidental touches. They can be frustrating. They cost more and they're more fragile and sometimes even the content on the display or the keyboard itself that you're typing on is like melted off of the side. Inconvenient, but technically impressive. The Mate 40 Pro has a triple camera setup, headlined by a 50 megapixel wide camera with a large one over 1.28 inch image sensor. In keeping with its symmetric design, there's one more circle over here. That's the laser autofocus module. Then there's a 5X periscope telephoto lens, there's a macro camera, and there's a 100 degree ultra wide camera. Let's start off with 12 megapixel still photos from the main camera. These are excellent, with natural looking fine detail, rich colors, very little noise, and wide dynamic range. You can also shoot at the nominal 50 megapixel resolution. You don't get much extra detail. Its main camera completely nukes the iPhone 12 Pro in most situations. It's got that nice big sensor to get a crispy foreground background separation. The front camera still isn't as natural looking as I'd like it to be, but it's very detailed, almost too detailed. And with this phone, part of the reason we've got that chunky hole punch is that there's also an ultra wide front camera. And then here's a few shots with the front camera where we also get an ultra wide lens. Although ideally you'd use it to get selfies with a bunch of your mates, but you know, these days and social distancing and all that. It's called the Kara 9000, and in benchmarks, it easily has the upper hand over all current Android devices. It sits at the top of the charts in CPU tests. And compared to devices with a similar resolution, its GPU scores come out on top too. And of course, like the last generation, it provides support for 5G network speeds as well. As far as sustained performance goes, the Mate 40 Pro does an alright job for a time but we did encounter thermal throttling after prolonged use. The phone tends to give you a few minutes of near-top performance, 